here. I've been helping people with kidney problems for more than 10 years now. There is no denying that the most useful intervention for those who want to lower their creatinine levels is to limit protein intake. There is literature to prove that it works. And there is plenty of you guys reporting huge successes when limiting protein intake. And today, we are going to answer one of the most important questions. I've got several questions about this, so I decided to make a full video about this question because this is a matter of extreme importance right now. So many people today are finally doing the switch from a diet that damages the kidneys to one that protects them, a low protein diet. I'm not exaggerating when I say that finding a way to reduce protein is the very first step towards lowering your creatinine levels. Yes, there is no improving, there is no avoiding ESRF if we don't find a way to manage protein intake correctly. But there is one problem here. Limiting protein intake is not easy. It comes with unwanted effects. It comes with problems and questions not easy to answer. So if you want to follow a diet that actually lowers your creatinine, you must do it right. This is what we talk about today. First question is about plant protein. Is plant protein safe for people with kidney problems? The short answer is no, unfortunately. You should severely limit even plant-based protein too if you have kidney disease stage 3, 4, or 5. So if you were eating soy or legumes on the regular, for example, you will need to limit that. But there is a but. There are some exceptions to the rule. Yes, this is a complex topic and the answer is not as simple as just avoiding anything protein. There is the need for a longer answer. Before that, we need to understand a little bit better what changed in the world of nephrology today. Why are so many CRF sufferers doing the switch to a low protein way of eating right now? Now, if you follow me regularly, you may already know that I'm a firm supporter of the very low protein diet or VLPD in short. I've really been advocating the VLPD for what feels like forever now. And eventually, in 2020, I was proven right. Today's guideline says that every single CRF sufferer must avoid protein at all costs. Yes, it's in the rule book now. Naysayers will have to step down and stop spamming us with all that about the keto diet, the paleo diet, the carnivore and that other millions of diets that will only send you in dialysis faster. For people who, say, suffer from kidney disease or heart disease or high cholesterol, do those people have to be worried switching on to something that's animal-based? No, you don't. And so there's this huge misconception in the medical community that a diet high in protein is bad for your kidney. There's no research, definitely no controlled research that shows that a, a high protein diet, protein from any sort, is bad for the human kidneys. This is what science says. This is what the rule book says. Here, we can read it. For adults with CKD stage 3 to 5 who are metabolic, metabolically... For adults with CKD stage 3 to 5 who are metabolically stable, protein should be restricted to 0.55 to 0.60 grams per kilogram ideal body weight per day. It is slightly higher for those with diabetes, 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram ideal body per weight. And the reason why they are now putting that on writing is because it works. What are the advantages of a low protein diet? There are several proven different benefits of the LPD. Decreased proteinuria. Proteinuria is not just the most important first sign of problems. It's also a predictor of GFR decline, by the way, but also decreased uremic toxins. Consider that uremic toxins are the cause of most signs associated with late stage of CRF. 
decrease metabolic acidosis, decrease phosphorus, very important for the heart among other things, decrease insulin resistance in those with T2D, decrease hypertension, and most important, ability to slow the decline of GFR. All these benefits are more than just supported by modern science. These are the benefits one of the luminaries of nephrologists, Professor Gang Ji Ko, outlined in a very important meta-analysis. We can basically consider them proven. And this is why, while in the past avoiding protein was just my advice, today it is the rule. The current guideline, the rule book nephrologists must follow, says that you need to limit protein intake now. So forgive me for gloating, but knowing that the VLPD is now the rule means that a lot more CRF sufferers will be saved from a lifetime tied to the big D machine. Primary healthcare providers will now have to stop telling the same lie to every single patient. There is nothing we can do, just wait for the dialysis. Well, that was and it always will be a lie. There is a lot, a lot we can do. But don't let your guard down just yet. Clearly not every clinician supplies the VLPD today. There are still two schools of thought today. Those that will tell you that there is nothing to do except wait for ESRD and those that will tell you to limit protein intake so you can keep your GFR steady for longer and maybe even improve. And I mean, these are the only two answers you may get from a professional and only one of them is right. And if your primary health care provider tells you to do nothing, find a better one. Find a real nephrologist. And if someone still tells you today to follow a keto diet or any other diet they wrote a book about 10 years ago, don't walk away, run. So we have seen why you need a VLPD. The how is a bit more complex, however. And as I was saying, I actually got several questions about this and I decided to answer the most important ones here today. Is plant protein safe for people with kidney problems? So the short answer was no. You should severely limit even plant-based protein if you have kidney disease stage 3, 4 or 5. As I was saying, the rule is consuming 0.55 to 0.60 grams per kilogram ideal body weight per day for people without diabetes and 0.6 to 0.8 grams per kilogram ideal body per weight for people with diabetes. What this implies is that protein should be really limited. So obviously, no meat, no fish, no dairy, no eggs. But you know, some plant-based foods do also contain protein but they are not to be completely avoided, just limited. The reason is that all foods contain a certain amount of protein. While it's impossible to avoid everything containing protein, it's better to understand very well which foods have the most protein. So question, what plant foods are highest in protein? Legumes, lentils, chickpeas, black beans, soybeans, and peas are all high in protein. And also tofu and tempeh. These are both soy-based products that are rich in protein and also nuts and seeds. Almonds, peanuts, cashews, chia seeds, pumpkin seeds, and hemp seeds are all sources of protein. And also whole grains, quinoa, brown rice, barley, and oatmeal are all examples of whole grains that are high in protein. Now even some green vegetables contain some protein, including broccoli, spinach, Brussels sprout, and asparagus. Now, these foods are mostly on the limit list, not on the avoid list. The exception here are probably legumes and soy-based products. They are very rich in protein and are usually completely avoided. But no serious dietitian will tell you to completely avoid nuts and seeds or whole grains. Limit, yes, but not avoid. Another question that I often get is, is plant-based protein better for you than meat and fish? Yes, yes, it is better. 
Firstly, because plant-based foods contain less protein and also because of acidity. You see, limiting the acid that the foods we eat generate inside the body is one of the main goals of a plant-based eating plan. And plant-based foods are usually alkaline-forming while meat and fish are acid-forming. But as I was saying, the quantity here matters more than the quality. You see, what actually causes GFR to decline what puts all the pressure on the kidney is something called nitrogen. Dietary nitrogen is created when the digestive tract breaks down protein into amino acids. All protein contains amino acids, plant protein, animal protein, it's basically all the same on this regard. And when this dietary nitrogen is created, the kidney has to remove it. No other organ can do that. And you see, getting rid of nitrogen is what makes your GFR decline more than anything else except well for untreated diabetes or hypertension yeah don't let those go untreated but also don't let protein destroy what's left of your gfr another question i got that needs an answer is is it safe not to eat protein at all no you just can't do that zero protein is not safe nor actually possible. As I was saying, with a few exceptions, basically every food contains some protein, even pasta, bread, rice, even vegetables. So you can't really eat no protein at all. Besides, that will be also very bad for you because while the kidneys really don't like protein, the other organs in your body still need some. And that's basically the worst risk linked to a low protein diet. Question. What are the problems linked to a low protein diet? Well, you risk malnourishment with too little protein, and that's bad. Malnourishment may increase risk for loss of GFR, but also unwanted weight loss and increase morbidity and mortality. We absolutely need to find ways to avoid malnourishment. This is what the author of the commentary to the new guideline writes about this issue. Conveying the message to patients to significantly reduce protein intake without attention to adequate calories may result in unintentional weight loss, malnutrition, and hyperkalemia. In accordance with recent Cochrane guidance on low protein diets for those with CKD, we suggest consideration also be given to the potentially negative impacts of intensive protein restrictions on patient quality of life. And I get that. There are risks. And also a diet that restricts protein will make your life more complicated. Life is harder when you cannot eat protein, especially in diabetics and other people who need to also face other serious dietary restrictions. It's not funny at all and it can take a toll, not just on your mind but on your body also. Now the problem is that most naysayers will tell you that since this diet is complicated, it's not easy to follow, it doesn't work, you must not follow a low protein diet because it has risks. What I want to answer them is, what is the alternative? I never get an answer to this question because the answer is dialysis. So what's better, a diet that's hard to follow or a life tied to the big D machine? I let you answer this question. One more very important question needs an answer. How can we avoid malnutrition? There is one way to avoid malnutrition and the other risks linked to a low protein diet that's improperly set up. A supplement called keto analogs. Keto analogs are used to prevent malnourishment in people following a low protein diet. These are special amino acids, the building block of protein that do not contain nitrogen. As I was saying, nitrogen is what's actually damaging the kidneys. So with keto analogs, you can actually avoid malnutrition while also avoiding the damage. Not every single clinician knows about this. So my advice here is to find a competent nephrologist or a renal dietitian that can help you set up this special eating plan. Nephrologists today must be informed and updated about this. Don't trust a nephrologist that tells you there is nothing we can do. And get informed about keto analogs if you are following a low protein eating plan. I've talked about them in my video up here. Watch it now to know more. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless.